Hello and welcome to Lady Applejack Speaks VA, a VA channel here on YouTube that focuses on the Netflix series that we've come to know and love as Stranger Things. This is an episode follow-up. <laughs> I had to stop and think for a minute. This is a follow-up, so this is a big departure from um, the content that you guys see me doing on this channel. Usually, I just put out the content, I have like a little opener, and then I have a closer, and that's it. And and then that's all you guys hear from me, unless you're over at TikTok or Instagram, and then you see a little bit more of me. But for the most part, um, all the content that I post is, is just strictly content. So this is a real big departure than what I'm used to. Um, I wanted to do a follow-up episode on The Elephant in the Room, which is Series 2, Episode 11. Um, so yeah, I'm here to talk about it. We're going to talk it out, and um, yeah, we'll go from there. I am going completely unscripted here, so <laughs> you guys have to bear with me and my little ADHD brain because, like, there's going to be times where I might venture off somewhere else and, and you just got, you got to stay with me. <laughs> Trust the process. <laughs> so I wasn't going to make a follow-up video to this, but I feel like we have so many, so many good conversations come up because of this episode that I feel it's important to have a discussion. Um, for those of you who have listened, you know what I'm about to talk about. For those of you who have not listened to any of the series, especially the last episode, episode 11, you might want to get out of here and go listen to that first if you want to, and then come back because there's going to be spoilers that are tied into this conversation. Um, and also, if you don't want to listen to that video because the triggers... I totally understand there are triggers of great details such as sexual assault and uh, physical violence. If that's something that you can't get around, that's okay. There's no shame in that. Um, you can message me on Google, not Google, the hell is that called? Instagram, <laughs> and ask me for an episode summary. Just say, I need an episode summary for Series 2, Episode 11, and I'll know exactly what you're talking about. I'll get it to you. Um so yeah, I don't want you guys to think you have to go listen to that before you can have this conversation. Um, I definitely want you guys to feel like this is a safe space and you can have this conversation and be knowledgeable about it without having to put yourself through any sort of heartache, if, if that makes sense. I hope that does. Anyway, um, first off, I just want to tell everyone because I've been getting a lot of comments and messages from you guys and I love you for it. I'm fine. I'm okay. Um, a lot of people had reached out to me after that episode aired and asked me, hey, the episode was great, but are you okay? Are you feeling okay? Is there anything that you need? You know, I'm here. A lot, of, a lot of people just message and said, hey, I'm here if you need to talk. And first off, I, I want to say that I am never stunned. I'm, I mean, what's the word I'm looking for? It. Wait, I got it. It never ceases to amaze me how lucky and amazing our community is here on the Stranger Things fandom and even here on YouTube. Um, the Stranger Things fandom and the VA community, I feel, are the best people in the world. They have to be, in my opinion. I mean, this is a TV show that follows the lives of these kids that are misfits, that don't fit in. They're freaks. They let their freak flag fly. And... I feel like there are heroes in a sense. And in one way or another, they teach us every day 
how to live humbly and how to be better people in this world. Um, so, I mean, it doesn't come as a surprise that our fandom is, is as amazing as I, I see it to be. Um, and I'm going to preface and say, I know right now our fandom on TikTok in particular has not been the best. We have some trolls. And as I say on TikTok and as I say to anybody that comes up to me and wants to say something, say, you know, that they're discouraged because they feel like they are being pushed out of the fandom and that the fandom is full of jerks. Not all of us are assholes. Um, I say it often and I say it with pride. I, I think that we all, um, that we have more amazing people out there than we do the trolls. And you guys prove that to me every single day. You prove that anytime that you comment, anytime that you like one of my videos or likes, like one of my um, mutual creators videos, I see it every day when you guys send me messages and you guys say, hey, I just wanted to reach out and tell you hi today. And I think you're awesome. And, and thank you so much for what you do. And it, it could be one of you guys sending me a message saying, hey, I'm not sure where to go with this. I want to write this, but I don't know how. Or I'm writing something right now and I'm dying for you to read it. Can you go over and, and take a look at it? You guys just blow my, you blow my mind. And I love, love the interactions I'm getting from you guys. I love reading your stories. I love filling you in and giving you advice on things that you're, you're working out in your head. And I... <sighs> especially love going on TikTok and seeing you guys cosplay. That that right there, it always blows my mind. Even as a veteran cosplayer, I love watching you guys do the things you do. I, I just think you guys are literally the most creative community out there right now. And I will die on this hill defending it. <laughs> so, um, yeah. You guys are amazing, and I am always beyond humbled any time that I get a comment from you guys, or you guys tell me that you like something, um, or anything like that. You guys amaze me, and the fact that you guys also request things, I know I gotta work on my requests. The, got, the fact that you guys request things to do like these scripts that speak to you is an incredible honor as well. And that's something that I'm going to bring up later on in the episode. So well, this, I guess, I guess it's an episode sort of, I don't know, but let's talk about this episode. It was a rough one. Yes, I am. Okay. But that episode was a very, it was one of my best pieces of writing that I've had in, in a long time, but it was also one of the most painful ones to write and record and finally listen to. I had to eventually listen to it to make sure the quality was there, right? It was difficult. I could probably count on my hand, one hand, the amount of times that I've cried because of something I wrote. Whether it is something as horrific as what Liz had to go through, or if it was killing off one of my characters. This episode in question... Usually I shred a few tears and then I call it a day. This one had me shook. The audio where you hear Liz crying, I was actually crying. Like that wasn't fake crying. It was, it was real. 
crying. It was sobbing and it was gut wrenching because I put myself in Liz's shoes for just a minute and I, I felt what Liz felt. Not to the magnitude that she felt it, but I felt it. <laughs> After that episode aired, I could not sleep. I was up all night and then the next day I was up and I was going to work and trying just to focus on things and it still haunted me. Liz was still in the back of my mind being that sad, sad, scared little girl that she, she was and she was still in the back of my mind laying on the bed sobbing, asking why she had to keep going through these, these heartaches because she kept saying that she lost everything. And I think that her saying I've lost everything was probably what really cemented it in my brain, what she was going through. Because think about it. She was in California. California was all she knew for most of her life. She lost her mother because her mother left her and left her in such a traumatic way. She was being abused by her father physically and verbally at that time. And here her dad goes, he marries, marries to a, a totally different woman on the Midwest side. They decide to move to the Midwest and she has to give up everything she loves. She has to give up the school. She has to give up her friends. And she was, like I said, the only female snare drummer in the drum line which that had that actually happened in inside my my um marching band there was only one girl inside our drum line and I kind of took a little bit of liberty and used some of her in Liz's character and um I mean Liz even if you guys remember at one point during Eddie's <laughs> uh investigative work he found out that she had just become a reserve cheerleader for the basketball team and she was so excited about it and then she finds out she has to move across country and leave all that behind so she lost all that and then she even though she wasn't a virgin I feel like sometimes we put so much weight on virginity that it it's just an obtuse thought process, right? Even though she wasn't a virgin, she lost a bit of her innocence that night. Um, her dad literally stripped her of everything she loved. And he did it all in, in one false swoop, you know? And she... I, I can't imagine how painful that would be as a person to have your, not only lose all these wonderful things about you, but also lose what you consider your dignity because somebody thought that they could just simply strip it away from you. Um, yeah. I think we don't have these conversations that much because we're uncomfortable with the truths that come with it. Um, I will tell you guys, well, you guys already know because I did disclose to you that I was a victim of physical and mental abuse. Um, as a child, I grew up in a household that while I had a, my mother who was very loving and patient with me, I had another family member that wasn't as humbling and kind as she was. Um, and the time frame that I grew up in, it was not acceptable to talk about these things. It's not even just the time frame. It was the culture I grew up in. I grew up in a Midwest, very conservative, very, very white town. Um, 
I was probably one of four kids that was multiracial. Um, I was looked down upon for that. Uh, the town itself was very, very religious. It, in this case, in Liz's case, she's coming from a Catholic community. I came from a very Methodist community um, that saw anybody of difference, people like Eddie Munson, as the enemy. Um, and one thing about living in such a community like that is you're already struggling, at least for me, I was already struggling because I was the freak, <laughs> not only because I was multiracial, but also because I was different from all of the other kids inside the neighborhood. I, I listened to punk rock. I listened to heavy metal like Metallica on a regular basis. I went to punk shows. I dyed my hair crazy colors. I still do that to this day. I shaved my head at one point and dressed very, very goth, very punk. I had piercings and <laughs> I, I have tattoos. I, I, I don't fit in with that demographic. I already stuck out like a sore thumb. And I was like Eddie Munson, the female version of Eddie Munson inside my little community and the last thing you want when you're already a freak is for people to find out about your parent you're like not your parents but you're like your family's dirty little secrets mine was that i had a parent or excuse me a family member that was physically and mentally abusive to me um, I don't think it's easy to explain unless you've lived that. And I wouldn't wish that on anyone at all. Um, I'm still processing some of the things that has happened to me. I go to therapy. I, and there's times when I go to therapy and I have, a breakthrough where I remember something that my brain repressed for my own protection and I come home and I have a panic attack right after. Um, it's a part of my everyday life. So I, I guess I, I feel more inclined to be candid about it and to talk about it uh, because I know how dangerous it is to be silent about these things. It eats away at you. Uh, and like I was mentioning, I think our society does not talk about these things enough. Um, when I was a kid, it was culturally inappropriate or it, I guess with culture. Yeah, it would be kind of a culture thing. It was inappropriate for us to talk about these horrific things that would happen and I can remember I can remember a time where I was outside as a little kid and I had done something I don't even know what it was it it wasn't anything bad it wasn't anything that would hurt anyone I just got in the way and the family member that abused me wailed on me out in our driveway. And our neighbors had seen it. They were standing right there. They saw everything that happened. And the next day, my neighbor, who was one of my little friends, one of my playmates came over and they said that, their mommy and daddy told them not to say anything because it simply wasn't their business to, to butt their nose in to ours. And at that time I realized that yes, that is wrong, but then it made me think that maybe I deserved what I got. 
And I want to take this time to tell you guys that if you are in a situation like that where you're scared to even speak or to make a move or anything like you are about to step off the line and screw something up even though even though logically you know that you're not screwing something up that that you're just being a human i'm here to tell you that no matter the case that that kind of behavior where you're getting hurt is never okay. You don't deserve that. You don't deserve to be torn to pieces. And I'm trying very hard not to cry because I'm very passionate about this. And I, I am not kidding. I love each and every one of you so much. Um, I think too much Ruby always says this in her, uh, in their videos, they say, I love you and you're my children. <laughs> and in a way, you guys are like my kids. I love you. You guys are my friends. You're, you're so much to me. And to think that somebody might be making you feel that way or has made you feel that way is, it breaks my heart. And I'm here to tell you that you don't deserve that. And I think with this episode, after I recorded it, I sat on it for like two hours. After I recorded it, after I did my editings and, and whatnot, I sat there for two hours on that upload page. And I thought to myself, do I really want to put this out there? Do I want to take a risk that there's going to be somebody that listens to it and they're going to hurt because of it? I did not want to put anybody through any pain. And my husband, being the smart man that he is, and if he's listening, I hope he knows that I'm being very sincere when I say that. Being the intelligent empathetic person that he is saw that I was kind of grieving and I was I was really struggling as to is this a good idea and he put it best he said when you were hurting when you were at your lowest when you are going through those things that you have to go to therapy for because it was so traumatic, didn't you stop to think, I wish I knew that there was somebody out there that was feeling the exact same way that I'm feeling now, that I am not alone in this. And, and, and there's other people out there that understand the kind of pain and grief and anxiety that I have right now. And he's right. I, there was so many times in my life where I thought to myself, I just wish that there was somebody that out there that could understand what I'm going through right now. And I didn't have that. I wrote that episode and I let Liz take me on her journey through her most happier moments of that weekend to the most devastating of that weekend. And I just trusted her to take me through the process because I knew she had a message. I knew there was something she wanted to convey and I knew that she wanted to make it known that these things happen. And because these things happen, it's not okay. And we need to talk about it more. And we need to shed light on these things. For instance, the United States, and particularly the state that I live in, is one of the highest states that has the, excuse me, it's one of these states that has the highest record cases of missing people 
missing adolescents that are wrapped up into sex trafficking. Um, sex trafficking is huge where I'm at and it's, it's alarming how, how bad it is. Like you could turn on the news here or get on your Facebook feed in, in my area and every single day there's another missing person. And it's a lot of times it's a, it's a kid that's missing. And the first thing that the police say is they're looking into sex trafficking at this point. It's a common, common thing here. And the fact that it's common and that it's just a normal thing for some people absolutely disgusts me. It has like, yes, it's happening and it's common. What are we going to do to fix it? And I think sometimes what we do is we say, hey, yeah, these people are missing and they think it's sexual assault. Now let's talk about the weather. And I, I think sometimes we forget to go back and, and look at these, these things and say, okay, these people are missing. They are probably being actively assaulted right now. What are we going to do to stop this? What are we going to do to find this person and, and get them to a safe space again, a space where they can heal. Um, and I think sometimes we get uncomfortable with having these hard talks and, and it's, it's very unfortunate. So after thinking about all this, I decided that I was going to move forward with the episode. I was going to go ahead and air it. And I was talking to my husband and I'm like, what can I do? do even on a small scale what can I do to make sure that I don't hurt anyone that has gone through this or that I am not just releasing content and it's strictly for the sake of of numbers and views like what can I do to make this worthwhile and I started doing some research and that's when I started finding you know, the phone numbers for RAIN and the National Domestic Violence Hotline. And that's when I decided I was going to litter that entire page for that video with as much resources as I could. Putting disclaimers up in the, inside the thumbnails, putting disclaimers inside the comments and, and the description box, making sure I put all those phone numbers out there. I wanted to do that. So Liz's story wasn't wasted on theatrics. Um, so yeah, I hope, I hope in the end game that the story, that episode not only was able to bring awareness to people about some of the things that are happening behind closed doors now that we ha have no clue are happening. Maybe that will bring awareness to them to watch for those signs or maybe somebody is going through that and they don't know where to turn and they happen to look at the thumbnail and in a perfect time and, and see these phone numbers and think I'm going to call this needs in now. That's what my end result was, what my desired end, end result was. I wanted to make sure that I left something good behind in, in its place and make it as an opportunity for us to learn and to educate one another on these, these topics that are just uncomfortable to talk about. <laughs> so, yeah, I blabbed a lot and I apologize. Um, I just felt like this was a good time to come on here and just kind of let you guys know that, yes, I am okay. I'm in a safe, happy space. I, I am going to therapy on a regular basis. I am taking my medication, which is really good for me. And <laughs> 
I have a very loving and understanding partner. Basically, I have my own version of Eddie Munson, and I get to I get to be with this amazing person for the rest of my life. And yeah, I'm happy. Um, I'm in a much better place than what I was as a child and as a teenager. So you guys don't have to worry about me. I'm okay. And I, I think some of you guys are probably waiting for me to drop a ball, like saying, hey, I'm ending this. I'm not doing any more episodes but that's not the case, obviously, because I put out a thirsty, uh, a thirst trap Thursday message saying that I'm going to be dropping new episodes. So obviously I'm here still, right? <laughs> so yeah. Um, so let's talk about what happens from here. What happens from here on this particular series is I'm still going to keep going with it. Um, I do have things lined up. I have kind of a game plan as to what's going to happen next. Um, there are only two people in this world that know about this game plan. And one's my husband. And the second person is my friend Lexi. Lexi, if you're listening to this, hi. <laughs> um, Lexi, I, I, I decided to bend Lexi's ear a little bit last night. And I was like, you know, I'm not quite sure what to do after this. And I, I said, I kind of got an idea, but I just need somebody to tell me it's okay to do this. <laughs> and thankfully, Lexi being the amazing soul that she is, was like, it, it, this is good. You're, 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 you're there. It's okay. You're doing fine. And, uh, I, I need to give a shout out first off to Lexi, because if you guys haven't gone to Lexi's channel, she has a channel here on YouTube, and I was fortunate enough to stumble upon it one day. I, I can't even remember how I came about finding it. I think it was just on my homepage one day when I came in, and I saw an episode titled Eddie X Listener clumsy and I was like what what the hell is this and I was like what, what what's clumsy and and then I clicked on it and I was introduced to a dear friend almost immediately and uh Lexi's channel is Lexi L-E-X-I-V-A if you type that inside the search engine at YouTube you'll find it it is so grossly underrated you guys Lexi's just awesome. Um, I love her content. Me and her have talked quite a bit in the past week about our, our, you know, goals for our channels and whatnot. And her content is just chef's kiss. And like she uses great descriptors and she even does Billy Hargrove content and her Billy Hargrove. Oh my God. I wasn't much of a fan of Billy inside the show, but she makes me love him. She makes me love him. And, and that's, that says something because usually I'm a hard person to, <laughs> to sway. I either don't like you or I love you to pieces. Um, <laughs> so the fact that she got me to admire Billy and see him in a different light was she's doing the Lord's work, everyone. <laughs> So yes, you guys need to go check out her content, but
so don't you even try it. But I want to say with absolute certainty that I think you guys, no, scratch that. I know you guys are going to be happy with the end result. I will tell you that the next couple episodes are going to be very difficult. They're going to be painful and it's going to be sad and you probably are going to be discouraged and you are probably going to be kicking me because some of the episodes are going to end on cliffhangers. That's just the way it is. I just need you guys to trust the process for a few minutes. Trust it and don't get discouraged with me too much. Keep in your mind that just because an episode ends like that doesn't mean a series is going to end like that. So, I'm, I'm just saying that. The end result, I promise you, is going to be worth it. It's going to be worth the wait. It's going to be worth the tears. It's going to be worth feeling like you're in shambles. <laughs> See, we got horns honking outside. It's just crazy. But anyhow, it's going to be worth the process. So, sit back. Try to enjoy the episodes as they come along. And just remember that just because it's ending kind of weird, like if the episode ends kind of weird, it doesn't mean that the whole series is a bust or that our characters are a couple that we have grown to love from afar are completely destined for the worst. I hope that makes sense. Um, and yeah, that brings me on to my next thing I wanted to talk about um, or just say thank you for, I guess. I want to thank all of you guys that have supported me on this series from start to finish. Um, I know sometimes, I know that I'm an oddball. I'm a complete oddball when it comes to doing this series because I have a female protagonist in it that isn't inside the, the actual TV series, that she's completely OG. And you guys are learning about her as I'm learning about her. I know a lot of people don't like having a character versus having just somebody say the name, the, the word listener inside the context. I know that's not a popular opinion to have, <laughs> that people like that. But you guys, you guys have trust in me on this and, and you let me explore and be creative as creative as I want to be without making me feel bad about it. And I want to thank each and every single one of you that have said it is okay to have that. It is okay to have your own original character and voice your own original character and let us put ourselves inside the shoes of this original character. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I cannot thank you guys enough. It's almost like doing cosplay, except for I don't have to bother with the makeup. So thank you. Um, yeah. So with that being said, um, I'm going to stop here because I have to record two episodes right now and get them out to you. I think you guys are going to like the episode for Eddie and female listener. Um, it's, it's sad, but it's also kind of funny and you, you get to see kind of that badass attitude that Eddie has, um, that he portrays on the show. So you're going to get a little piece of, of Eddie being, being Eddie. <laughs> so I'm going to record those for you. I'm also going to try to do uh, at least one request tonight, maybe like a one shot, um, maybe do some spice with it. I don't know. I have to look at my requests and see what I can do with you guys. But yeah, um, keep an eye out for that. That's going to happen. Uh, excuse me. I got the hiccups again. Ugh. Okay. I think it's gone. All right. So ending here, I want to just say once again that if you or someone you know is going through a hard time, 
um, whether they are in a situation similar to Liz's or you suspect they might be, or even if they just need someone to talk to. Those numbers are still available on my page, on my description, but um, you could always contact Rain, and that's with two N's at the end. Their number is 800-656-4673. The National Domestic Violence Hotline number is 800-799-7233. If you have, or if you know somebody that has suicidal tendencies, there is also tons of resources out there for you. Um, the most recent resource and the most easy resource to obtain is the new um, National Suicide Prevention Hotline, which is 988. Um, if you dial those three numbers, that will get you connected to somebody that can help you and give you the resources and tools you need in order to overcome whatever it is you're battling. Um, yeah. So those are three numbers I could give you off the top of my head. I can also say that if you need more resources, I am always available to talk to. I try to reach, I try to respond to everybody's content uh, comments slash DMs, etc., on Instagram within 24 hours. You can reach out to me on Instagram if you want, do a DM. If you don't want the pressure of a DM, um, I am including my email address inside the description box. You can email me and I can follow up with you there. Um, it's a 24 hour turnaround there too because I'm terrible at checking emails, but feel free to utilize those. Um, I used to be a state and federal um, agent of sorts with the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. So I am very familiar with the resources out there um, to help people going through any sort of difficult time. So yeah, uh, don't be shy. I am completely non-biased about everything <laughs> for the most part. Um, and I won't judge you if you're asking for help or if you want to talk about why you need to have help. So yeah, I think I let this go on a little bit too long, but I hope you guys um, enjoy tonight's episodes. I put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears in them. So I'm, I'm going to record those now and get those edited and hopefully out to everyone before midnight tonight. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. And yeah, um, I'm going to end that here and say that I love you guys. You guys are all rock stars in my opinion. You're the Eddie Munsons of our community and I adore the hell out of you. <laughs> you guys are all amazing. And yeah, um, before I go, I'm going to put out a couple more shout outs. Uh, like I said, uh, Lexi, go check out Lexi's content. It's Lexi, L-E-X-I. Um, I believe it's underscore VA. Or if you just type in Lexi VA inside the YouTube comments, it's going to pop right up for you. Um I also want to give a shout out to Too Much Ruby uh, and the official Eddie Munson VA, I want to say it is. Uh, Too Much Ruby, if I'm wrong and you're listening, put that down in the comments. <laughs> but um, Ruby and um, the official page, they do a lot of collaborations and I love their content so much. They actually put out a video last night. And it was so funny because the video um, is drunk Eddie Munson and he plays with action figures and he, he does like some stuff. 
he he makes a headband. I'm not going to tell you what he uses so you guys <laughs> can enjoy it as much as I did. I was straight up cackling. That was like soul food for me. And I loved, loved the episode so much. It made me laugh when I needed it the most. So yes, go check out their stuff. They're really good. I think I've done um, a call out to Too Much Ruby a couple times before in the past, but go check them out. And I also have a Wattpad recommendation. So the Wattpad recommendation is actually for a, a newly published author. So let me go ahead and pull up my notes here so I can make sure I say their name right. Um, let's see. Yes, it is Billy Hargrove wife, all one word, 84. They have a story out there. They're working on the fifth chapter now, I believe. And, um, or they're about to, they just put up their fourth chapter today and it's called Hawkins dream life. And it's available on Wattpad. I don't know if it's available on any other outlet. If you're listening, um, to the author, drop that down in, inside the comments. Feel free to sell yourself a little bit on here. I say that to anyone that needs that. And, um, uh, their, their, their story is, is super cute. It, it's basically a original character and they are in a love triangle. And I'm not going to say who the love triangle is because I want you guys to go read it yourselves and figure it out. <laughs> so yeah, go check out those authors um, and those creators and support each other. I, I think that's really, really important. And another thing I want to say too is if you want to do something like this and you want to create, whether that's VA or writing or art, I think you need to go do that now. Um, put a little bit of faith in yourself today and carry that faith with you onward and trust your instincts. Um, when I started this episode, this, this channel, I didn't expect it to blow up at all. I didn't expect any more than 10 subscribers if I was lucky. And I am so humbled and proud of where this channel has gone. And I hope that it continues on from here and only gets bigger and better for you guys. So yes, whatever it is that is holding you back, whether you are just afraid to write, you don't know where to start, or you're just afraid to create and, or you don't know how to do it. Or maybe you have a learning disability where it makes it very difficult to do these things. You, if you have enough passion in your heart and enough drive, you can succeed in doing anything. Um, I'm going to, put out there that it's just for perspective F. Scott Fitzgerald one of the greatest authors in um, modern English literature history was dyslexic think about that for a second this is somebody that wrote one of the greatest masterpieces of modern literature The Great Gatsby and look how amazing that particular book is. It's in every single classroom across our country. It's an international, an internationally read book. He was dyslexic and he was able to write that. So take that for what you will. I'm going to get off my soapbox and stop being an inspirational poster to you guys. <laughs> but yes, I love you guys. And until the next time, I'll see you soon.